Okay, so uh, this question asks, uh, find the frequency of a tuning fork that takes uh, this amount of time. So it's a question is giving us a uh, period because it's the amount of time to complete one oscillation. So my period is 2.05 times 10 to the minus three seconds. And it's asking us to find the frequency up. Ah, yeah, so um, all you have to do is remember. Uh, so in lecture and in the textbook, you are introduced a bunch of terms uh, that to, uh, that that you should be aware of when you're dealing with oscillation. So this is period. And the question is asking you for frequency. And frequency relates to other quantities that could be invoked in oscillation um, in in couple different ways, and what I will tell you is that it's good to have them memorized. <laughs> don't ever trust someone who tells you you don't have to memorize anything in physics or math. There are stuff that you just have to memorize. And the two relationships about frequency that I have found useful in many different situations is one that relates to frequency to period. Frequency is the reciprocal of period. That's useful from time to time. It can be one of the ways to measure frequency. And the other one that, depending on context, is useful is the relationship of frequency to angular frequency. So angular frequency, which you will see in a bunch of different formulas, is related to frequency by 2 pi times f. So this particular one doesn't happen to be used in this question, but I will say it's good to have this memorized because uh, there are questions that kind of expect you to have them memorized. <laughs> and if you don't have it memorized, then you know, those questions will stump you. So, okay, one divided by 2.05 times 10 to the power of minus three. And I like entering my scientific notation numbers this way because this takes precedence over the division. It, it, if you're doing the whole times 10 to the minus three the long way, then you have to make sure to put parentheses so that uh, you know, the right operation takes precedence first. So 487.8, yeah, that sounds like some kind of musical note, probably. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, look at the other question. Okay, it asks, how long does it take a child on a swing to complete one swing if our center of gravity is 2.5? meters below the people. Let me just draw a picture to have a right mental image. I'm imagining a swing. Um, there's some kind of a uh, rope or something. And I guess I'm justified in saying that um, it's a rope of negligible mass. And it says that the center of mass of the child is at some distance L um, below the people. Okay. And um, <laughs> I guess uh, I would uh, repeat what I said about memorization. Uh, <laughs> so I have this formula memorized, uh, the angular frequency of a pendulum, or this is the natural oscillation frequency of a pendulum, which gives you the angular frequency, not frequency, is given by square root of g over l, where g is uh, gravitational acceleration and L is this exact quantity that I labeled. Uh, and this is the case for simple pendulum. If you are dealing with a pendulum made out of a rigid body, a physical pendulum as they're called, um, then it gets more complicated. I, I have this memorized. And because I have this memorized, <laughs> and because I also have memorized these two relationships that I mentioned earlier, that angular frequency relates to frequency, by 2 pi times f, and that frequency relates to period by not what I was writing, but uh, by reciprocal relationship. Uh, because I have these all memorized, I can work this out quickly. I can plug this into here to get, oh, angular frequency is uh, 2 pi divided by period, and I can solve this to get an expression for period. Um, which is 2 pi divided by omega, plug this in to get 2 pi times the square root of L over G, uh, 
I got everything. I can now just plug in numbers into calculator. 2 times pi times square root of, oops, oh, I did it wrong. 2 times pi times, um, and I need to write down the parenthesis L 2.1 divided by G 9.8. Parenthesis close, and this is still the last thing on the calculator. And when I press this, it'll do the square root. When I do say OK, it'll calculate on everything. 2.91 seconds. So I can do all this quickly because I have all this memorized. And, uh, you know, that is actually my number one recommendation. Uh, these formulas, they occur often enough that you should have it memorized. But I guess at this point in your educational journey you might not have it memorized in which case the second best thing is to know where to look it up so your textbook has a chapter on oscillations which is what this week's assignments are um, and within the section uh, chapter for oscillations it has a section on pendulums so there, um, so the, I guess the formula that's least likely to be memorized outright is the one for angular frequency or the natural oscillation frequency. And almost any um, textbook will either drive it or give it to you at some point to somewhere. Um, so, so you should know where to look it up uh, and then you can take it the rest of the way. Um, and, but, uh, but, you know, I, I gotta tell you that, um, so, I mean, in the lowest levels of math, like arithmetic or really basic algebra, not logarithmic algebra, um, yeah, in, in those steps, you wouldn't be memorizing things. But um, the higher levels you go, uh, the, the, there are more things to memorize. It's, uh, I think in computer science, it's uh, basically what can be analogized to uh, the memory versus time problem. Uh, there, there are uh, like calculational algorithms where you can cut down on calculation time if you have a ton of memory to store pre-computed results. Uh, it comes up in, I guess, cryptography with something called the rainbow tables and whatnot. Um, and I think it's something like that applies to us human beings too. Um, you can rework everything, you know, if you wanted to. You can just solve the simple pendulum problem from scratch. That'll take you 15 minutes. <laughs> um, you can do that, nothing stops you. But you know, practical problem solving, you really should have results like this memorized because that'll save you a bunch of time. Yeah. Yeah. At least the time to look it up, if not drive, the uh, derivation of the whole thing.